Hi there, I'm the producer and director of the film Ed Thigpen, Master of Time, Rhythm and Taste, and my name is Don McGlynn. In today's podcast, you'll be hearing about the life that Ed Thigpen had when he moved uh, from L.A. to Copenhagen. He married, a, married for the second time, and also he created sort of a relationship with all of the expatriate uh, jazz musicians that were in Copenhagen. One of his close friends there was Horace Parland, who was prominently featured in this podcast. And Horace and Ed sort of talk about what it's like to play together. And Ed also kind of illustrates what the rhythm is in the song that you're going to be hearing in this podcast. It's called Blues for HP. It's a composition that Ed did for Horace Parland. And uh, after that, you hear a lot from his daughter Denise, his close friend Donald Mead, and they talk about his second marriage. And I'm not going to tell you what happens because I want you to listen, but it's kind of heartbreaking. We came over here and spent a month at Tivoli, Tommy and Ella. Backstage at the Tivoli, a young lady was back there. They were wearing mini skirts at that time. And I saw these pretty beautiful legs and uh, turned out to be Ingalisa. And uh, we started talking and hanging out, and then when it, the engagement was over, we started communicating with letters back and forth, and one thing led to another, and then I would come over and visit, and fell in love with the young lady. And finally, I asked her to marry me, and I took her to Los Angeles. I, I still had my home out there. But she kept getting homesick and wanted to come home, and it was such a cultural shock. Here she was, 21 years old. I was 17 years older than her. Then we became pregnant after a year, almost a year, and she wanted to have the baby over here, and she had some sicknesses, female sicknesses, and she had a gynecologist and doctor here. So she came back to have the baby, and then the curtain went down for me in L.A. Like, what am I doing? So I, I might as well try Denmark. I had uh, visited Denmark in 1970, and at that point in time, there was Dexter Gordon and Ben Webster and Kenny Drew. When I got here, we had a great community of American artists. There was uh, Benny Bailey, and there was Art Farmer, for example. All of them were here. But most of the guys who were here, I don't think they moved here because they didn't have any work, that's for sure. You know, they all were well established in their careers. I think you might call it a kind of exchange program in a way because the Danish and other European musicians, they learn from us the history and the sources of the music. And we learn from them the European culture. And that's a good exchange, actually. And then we had other guys coming in and out of here, Johnny Griffin, the who's who of jazz were in and out of here all the time. Plus, you had a lot of wonderful Danish musicians. So the atmosphere was very good, very good, very, very good. In many ways, I was playing with a more variety of people than I was in the United States because when I was in the States, I was always working with one group which worked all the time. So consequently, I wasn't playing with a lot of different people. The true test of a good musician is to be adaptable and to be flexible and to be able to play in different contexts. He's a good example of that. Blues for HP, meaning a little blues I wrote for Horace Parland. And basically it's a simple little motif. Be going back and forth between a two field depending on what horse is playing or the soloist is playing. So it's relatively simple. I don't play a lot of stuff in it. But as a good friend of mine once said, simple is not always that easy. It's a comfortable feeling. It's, it's a feeling that you, you know he's always there when you need him. The main thing 
is to give a good swinging feel and a bluesy feel to the rhythm along with the uh, blending with the melodic player. He's always listening and he, he, he knows exactly, he always knows what you want before you want it actually. It's going to be a pleasure to uh, perform with it. Even though we're relatively close together, it's not so often we, that we get to perform together in groups. For me, it, you could call it maybe a dream uh, because I call him the cream among drummers. Playing with him is, it's, it's, he makes it so easy. You don't have to think about so much about what you're doing because you know he's very intuitive. He can, he can add things to the music and add things to what you do that make the music really come alive.
as you know, I said I'd married, met this young lady, Ingelisa, who became the mother, my wife and the mother of my children. Ingelisa was a beautiful young lady who was extremely bright, but had a touch of bohemian in her. She was independent, no nonsense. It's actually a funny, probably funny mixture in our house. They said he's not so bohemian. <laughs> no, I was very conservative. <laughs> So. English was loose. <laughs> yeah, she'd paint the walls. Yeah, yeah. I will always be indebted to the fact that she gave me two beautiful young children. She was a very warm, very quiet, gentle person, and a good mother, actually. And she would ask you things. Well, what do you think about this, or what do you think about that? And uh, that's what made her interesting. As time went on, we had some cultural clashes, and one thing led to another, and we had to separate. I had hoped that it, it, it would have lasted a long, long time, because um, I've always wanted the best for him. It was a hard blow. The separation was a hard blow, because in many ways, I thought I had failed. Since she was ill a great deal of the time, I, I got custody of children and have an annulment or whatever we want to call it over there, civil difference, in order for me to have control of and secure the life that I wanted for the kids. And I think deep down inside she understood that because she wanted the best for everybody. She had stomach trouble when she was 14 and it just sort of ate away and by the time she was, what, 30, 33, 32, 33, you know, her, her body just couldn't take anymore. And her illness became worse and consequently after a couple of years of the separation, she died. When she died and Ed called me, I said, oh no. And it's just like somebody took the wind out of my sail. And uh, I have sad feelings about that every day. It was a month or two before she died that she told me, because she called, that uh, she was sick. Otherwise, I didn't know. I really didn't understand, you know, what was going on. It hit me a couple of years after, when I was a little more aware of what was going on and what, was, and what I was lacking. You can never get over stuff like that. I didn't want the children separated, and I, was, I, I had promised myself that they wouldn't have to come up in a, in, a, in a home someplace. So I kept the promise. He's on the road a great deal, and to have to be uh, a father uh, to two children, a boy and a girl, uh, when their mother is uh, separated and then dies, uh, that's a tremendous task. He just rolled up his sleeves, and he knew what he had to do, not to harp on religion but the maker makes ways for things to happen. Thank God I have a, a, my faith and I have my prayers and I have this. You know, what I have to hold on to in order to do what I think I have to do in this life. Well, knowing that it was hard for him also, children, they, they take it upon themselves also to uh, try to ease some of their parents' pain. So I think we just all got together to just try to make it work. Well, now my children, hopefully I've earned enough respect for them that they're proud of the name Fig Peg. Hey Bobbers, Keon here, and you just heard the fifth and penultimate episode in our series on Ed Thigpen. In this part, we saw how Ed ended up raising a family in Copenhagen, following his departure from Ella Fitzgerald's band in 1972, as well as some of the highs and lows of that period. We also heard more from Horace Parlin, whose friendship was clearly very special to both men in their final years. These podcasts are called from the documentary Ed Thigpen, Master of Time, Rhythm, and Taste, directed by Don McGlynn, edited by Frank Axelson and Christian mulkey Lith, with sound by Thomas Martin. Bop is produced by Don McGlynn, co-produced by Mark Canner and Franny Alfano, and edited by me, Keon Baziri. Until next time, thanks, and take care.